Okay, welcome back. And uh, as I said, um, now to look again at um, the declaration of a, a state of emergency on our food security. We've talked about that, but this is such a big topic that um, uh, we shall be return, returning to it from time to time. And uh, this time we have commentary uh, coming in from uh, the diaspora. Um, we have Dr. Helen Onyaka with us. She is Associate Professor of Chemical Engineering at um, uh, Edgebaston in the United Kingdom. Edgebaston, that is the uh, University of Birmingham, Edgebaston in the United yes. Kingdom. Uh, good morning to you, Dr. Onyaka. Uh, right next to good her. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, right next to her is uh, Engineer Modupe Ajibola. Engineer uh, Ajibola is a US based uh, technology expert and he does join us from there. A fine morning to you, Mr. Ajibola. Good morning, sir. Indeed. Okay, right. let me come over to you. I've been, you know, really uh, wanting to get to the bottom of this. Um, well, uh, Dr. Nyaka, you're an associate professor of chemical engineering uh, yes. in the UK. What's the connection? I'm just curious. What's the connection? Or is it a different specialization? And as a Nigerian and an expert, uh, you do have insights that you'd like to comment upon. No, there is a strong connection. You know, um, um, my first degree is in industrial microbiology, which I did in Nigeria. Then I've got a PhD in chemical engineering. The thing about chemical engineering is got quite a lot of facets. And one of the, what I focus on is food and food safety. And I'm also the program director of food safety and management at the University of Birmingham. So I do teach about food. How can we produce food sustainably? How can we preserve food? How can we reduce food waste? So these are all parts within my remit in chemical engineering. So I yes, see. I'm in the right departments, yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Um, That's okay. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, give me your thoughts on, um, uh, first of all, the declaration of the emergency, you know, on food security. Um, there you are over in uh, Birmingham. Uh, it is possible, although I'm not suggesting that that is the case with you, that um, uh, our people in diaspora uh, don't know how bad it is. You've been hearing about, uh, maybe you've been hearing about, um, uh, I, I, just, I just take tomato out of the hat, uh, the one that everybody in Nigeria, uh, it doesn't matter your level of uh, education or literacy, has been complaining about uh, something like maybe five tomatoes costing uh, an unheard of uh, amount, tomatoes that we used to take uh, very, you know, very much for granted, but suddenly nobody could afford it anymore. Um, uh, so uh, go ahead, uh, Dr. Uh, Onyeka, and tell us, okay. you know, what, 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 what caught your eye in this? So just to say something, food security is a global issue. It's not just for Nigeria, because our planet today faces critical, you know, environmental challenges like food waste, water pollution, climate change, and loss of biodiversity. All this increases the global population, you know, uh, and also increasing the global population. All this reflects on the most pressing issue of food security. So, for example, more than 800 million people worldwide, not just in Nigeria, are affected by food security or food scarcity. And more than 2 billion suffer from malnutrition. This is worldwide data. Presently in the UK, you know, I've had opportunity to meet the MP and we, you know, he is driving right to food campaign. So we talked about my research and what we can do to feed into the right to food because we believe everyone has right to food, which is what food security is all about. So it's not just a Nigerian issue, it's a global issue. Mm. But coming down to Nigeria, luckily I have quite a few um, collaborators and people I work with that inform me about the issues about you know, food security. And I'm from Nigeria originally, so I do understand the pressing needs. So to me, the declaration is such an exciting time because this is now, we have an administrator that's taking this very seriously. So I think it's a time for all food specialists, people that are you know, in agricultural sectors and stuff, for us to pull health together and see what we can do to ensure that this is driven forward to have a very you know, um, a big impact in our country, Nigeria. Indeed. And um, uh, 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 can I come over to you, Engineer Modupe Ajibola? You are based in yes, the sir. US and uh, you're a technology expert. What's the, what's the part of technology uh, uh, going forward uh, in, in the solution of this problem after the declaration of an emergency 
uh, indicates that there is a serious problem. What's the, what's the part yes. of technology in this? Well, thank you for asking that question. I, I just want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Oyeke for coming out because we had, we had met several years ago uh, yes. and she approached us, um, I, you know, because she knows I'm into technology and solving these kinds of problems. She approached us because she had an idea for Nigeria and how to solve some of this problem. In fact, how to preempt this, some of these problems. And this was like about six, seven years ago. And you fast forward to now that it's now eminent and the administration now cares about it. Now she's like, okay, it's time. We got to yeah. now do something. And, and the, the, the good news for us in the technology sector is that technology also has come of age where AI and intelligence that allows us to actually uh, micro-analyze issues at state level, uh, federal level, what's affecting the people nationally, what's affecting the people locally. This is where we come in with technology to be able to get the right information because garbage in, garbage out. When you to depend on international bodies to provide statistics on your own food crisis, it's not a good place to be. But when you're able to identify the food crisis from your own citizens, based on activities that are going on at local levels and technology is able to acquire that information, then it's a good place for us in, in, in Africa. So these types of collaboration between the technocrats, uh, between the technology people, the scientists, the engineers, the professors, coming together now because they see an administration that is serious about this issue, this is a good time for all of us. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, okay, I, I can see you smiling there, uh, uh, Dr. Nyeka. Uh, it, it seems to me that you're on all fours with uh, that position because we're, we're, we're not going to get out of it um, if we continue to do things the way we have been doing them. Yes. Uh, we, we're going to need a, a lot of the input of uh, technology and science in this. It, it can't be smallholder farming the way uh, things have always been. There are all so many different areas of uh, technology, uh, including chemistry. Uh, it just occurs to me. Uh, all of that yes. for improvement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, doctor. Yes. That, please, that, please. Is, that is very... Go ahead, doctor. I was just saying that no. it's technology and science are going to have to come together uh, in this if we're yes. going to be able to not just feed ourselves, but we're ambitious. We even want to do more than that. We want to feed others uh, if we can. And why shouldn't we? Definitely. And you know what, why I was smiling, I was really excited, honestly, when I saw the declaration, because I remember years ago, because I do quite a lot of training for the, you know, different countries, China, food safety um, offices in Saudi. I remember approaching some people in Nigeria to say, let's do training on food safety and matters of food. And I remember the response I got then was, oh, food safety or issues of food is not a problem in the African stomach, you know? And I'm thinking, what? People eat food, get poisoned, they die, and you're telling me it's not a problem in African stomach. So the president making such a declaration is, to me, is really, really amazing and really exciting opportunity. And I believe something is going to happen. I strongly believe in this now. Indeed. That now is spotlighted. We're going to all pull heads together to do something, yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because you know, she, she, she would always emphasize the value of education, uh, you know, yes. information dissemination, because, you know, you have to educate, you have to find a way to get information to people, you have to find a way to preserve, the, the, for the farmers, you have to find a way to preserve the foods that they're distributing, you have to find a way to make sure that there's no contamination during distribution yeah. and, and consumption. During the consumption is probably where you find... You know, in Nigeria, I'll, I'll, I'll say something, you know, every time I go to eat suya or something on the side of the road, I'm just giving a hypothetical example here. Well, actually, a real example. And I have a stomach crisis. And, and, uh, and you can charge it to the fact that I'm not used to always eating such spices. But sometimes uh, those kinds of things, some people, it leads to death. And there's no really where, there's no place where data is, is associated with food poison, food information that people can readily access. And I'm an I'm educated person. If I can access it, I can imagine the people that are native also cannot, cannot uh, that, are, that, are, that are not, uh, you know, that don't have the mediums I have, probably cannot access this information. So everybody can consequently go to the same place to get the same level of food poisoning, you know, and, and nobody would, would, would bat an eye until it's too late for a lot of us. So I think mixing the food safety with the shortage issue, which, by the way, look at uh, Ukraine 
and the war is affecting Europe and itself on, in their own food crisis. And that ripples into how much time and money they want to spend on Africa to continue to support Africa's crisis. So Africans, uh, the government has to take their own leadership in preserving their own people. Yeah. And Oga having this initiative, Tinubu, yes. it's uh, honestly it's an exciting day for everybody. I, I just think this is the kinds of things that you need uh, professors uh, and doctors like, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, Dr. Yoka here to be able to support and help, help. And I'm hoping that there's a reach out now to folks like her mm -hmm. because she's been doing this work. She's been mm -hmm. following up with technocrats. She's been following up with technology engineers. She's been researching. When she came to us, she had full knowledge of what she wanted to do. And mm -hmm. we just had to tell her how technology can be applied. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Onyeka, the, the role of yes. science and technology is is indispensable in this because we read of some of our countries, uh, some of some African countries that are already mm -hmm. a bit, you know, more advanced in in, uh, advanced, in terms yes. of uh, being able to manage their agriculture, their output, yeah. uh, storage, uh, shipping. I, I believe that in Kenya, uh, tulips, which I understand, you know, you know how it is in the West. Those are very very important yeah. things, uh, maybe more so than in here. And they have to do a daily kind of a transportation uh, from their country uh, to the West and all sorts of technological uh, aids in order to be able to do that. Now imagine if it, if it works for flowers, we know it also works for other fruits that are seen abroad. Um, but there is a challenge because we are hearing here that um, there are some preservatives, some chemicals that are not necessarily the yes. best. So no doubt by the time all of science comes together, we'll know what is the best for our purposes. Uh, but we certainly, uh, an expert was in our studio uh, recently, and he said that up to 60% uh, of agricultural produce, especially pre perishable produce, is lost simply because of yes. uh, lapses in, you know, in, in the whole storage regime. So, um, and we don't have a shortage, I don't think, of uh, agricultural experts in Nigeria either. It's just that it probably needed this push of the government at the center declaring an emergency, which now means that all eyes are going to uh, be on it. And um, uh, what, what are your thoughts, Dr. Onyeka, as opposed uh, as, uh, on, on the idea of um, having uh, people like you, people like uh, engineer, uh, 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 people like engineer Ajibola, you know, okay. uh, in Nigeria as well. It's just that maybe they've been preaching to deaf ears, but now everybody has to listen. No, I mean it's exciting times, like we've said earlier on, because quite a lot of my research focuses on sustainable food production. So I do quite a lot of research on food preservation, novel technologies for uh, uh, food production and also safety of reformulated food. One of the key areas of my research in the, in the university is on food waste valorization. Because you know, all this impact on food security. So for example, there's a lot of food waste in Nigeria. We can preserve it by using some of the novel technologies of food preservation. And one of the exciting research we're doing at the moment is you know, we're able to use, I'll give you some examples, to use electricity to bake bread. Okay, just something simple like that. And that bread lasts for one month without going moldy at all. It takes a shorter time, less electricity to produce that bread. And it's cross-free. It's just exciting. So we call it super bread. Mm. That's one of the research I'm doing in the lab. Another research is we use cocoa waste from the chocolate industry, beer spent grain, and also um, we use malt grains that are the waste and we convert that to, you know, value bioactive compounds. We produce protein from the waste. We also um, generate phenolic compounds, vitamins, and fiber that can go back into the food chain or go back into fertilizers, for example. Other excited, I do quite a lot of research around sustainability and how we can, you know, um, improve uh, food security. This is just a few. I can tell you a lot more. And when I had the opportunity to present it to... Um, um, the MP at the House of Commons, they were really excited. And they're bringing us back again, hopefully in October, to come and talk about these innovative technologies and innovative ways. For example, one of the research we're doing is producing bacteriocin, which is an antimicrobial that is safe 
Because I know that quite a lot of food in Nigeria, they put lots of antimicrobials, even in animal feeds. But we can produce this. This one is, you know, really safe. And you can use that to put it into food and the food can last longer. So food preservation. And there are different technologies you can use Indeed. to preserve food. And I do teach these technologies, not just at the university, but at other university in the U.S. here called mm. Osiri University. Mm. So which we have quite a few Africans joining. Mm -hmm. How can we preserve our food? How can we ensure that the food is safe? How can we, you know, produce food in a sustainable way? These are the areas that I come in. And I'm really, and I've written quite a lot of articles and books, you know, in this area. Indeed. So I'm really excited about, so yeah. if I'm smiling, yeah. it's because I'm really excited about, you know, <laughs> President's uh, declaration. And I think this is an exciting time for food scientists. Indeed. I, I, I want to contribute to that because, you know, just hearing her, your passion about this topic, is 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 infectious to the rest of us that 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 always look forward to Nigerians being able to participate in this. My 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 hope now that we have an administration that at least has uh, exposure to the value of technology and value of human resource can leverage these types of knowledge, but not in a way of uh, you know uh, where we typically would have someone just try to generate a contract or a proposal that would. would would spend so much money and you've seen, you know, minimal results in, is to actually engage folks like this. So the resume of whatever consortium or team that is formed to solve these problems there is, is solid and with a solid background and, and they given a mandate that, look, this is the result you guys are saying, scientists are saying you can deliver. If you can deliver it, this is what, you, this is the reward for it. I think folks now are ready to not focus on just the monetization of these efforts, but you know, really solve problems because this is their passion. You got to put passionate people in in passionate situations so that it can solve these problems. For me, for instance, in the U.S. now, uh, we have a platform called TheVerVoice.com. Uh, if anyone checks it out, it is absolutely helping voters now in the U.S. to align with their constituency, whether you are federal or, or local representatives. Now, the your constituents knows what you're doing. Uh, uh, how it affects their life, and they subsequently take actions towards helping you decide whether it's the right path or not the right path for them. And if you refuse them, then there's consequences during elections. So for us, we are trying to make sure the partnership between uh, voters, constituency, and uh, leadership, and, and the citizens have sustainable values in it. So I'm excited. I'm just, you know, I'm always excited about stuff like this, but I just want to do <laughs> Indeed. Uh, her point of that matter. And, and staying with you for a moment, um, I imagine there's a heck of a lot for technology uh, to do in uh, all of this. We're talking about this um, state of emergency now being declared and expected improvements uh, thereof as a result. Um, uh, President Tinubu, uh, when he was speaking about this, uh, had, had you, know, uh, you know, observed that we don't really have the luxury of seasonal farming. We're going to have we must be able to farm all the year round. Of course, you know that is now going to bring in technology. Dr. Nyeka was talking earlier about electricity. Uh, we do have our challenges with electricity, but we're also seeing solar farms, uh, solar panel farms uh, elsewhere. Uh, you know, I imagine that all sorts of energy, new energy, clean energy, is going to have to be brought to bear, especially in the area of irrigation. That's a te technological issue, isn't it? It is a technology issue, equal issue. And this time around, it has to be thought through. What do I mean by that? You remember the issues of where there'll be a bunch of, when, when we in Nigeria hear about technology, we, we just go farm it out and we, we buy a whole bunch of stuff. And then we realize we're missing one ingredient or two in it and the whole project has gone to waste. You know, you, you mentioned solar, for instance. You will see a bunch of street lights work for three, maybe four weeks, and then boom, they're no longer working. And people are like, what happened? Well, we invested millions and millions of dollars in these things, and they didn't work because we don't think through the process by talking to uh, uh, experts to see the uh, adverse environmental uh, conditions that some of the technologies would, would face challenges doing, right? You need batteries, you have conditions that affect batteries that you have to replace with solar. And so you have to apply the right technology to the right problem. And to do so requires studies of what's really going on in those environments. It requires scientists to tell us, hey, even the technology we're applying, what is the, what is the upside to it based on how it's going to react to the, to the type of fruits 
to the type of vegetable, to the type of items we're trying to store, right? So there's, there's several ways outside of just applying a hammer as if every problem is a nail. You don't really, so in some cases, electricity, the solar itself, ha, actually there's technology now that actually uses the heat energy to convert it, not solar, converts the heat energy to help you on the, on the flip side to preserve, preserve certain items by, because what it does is there's compounds that the, the, the harder they get, the cooler they become. So these are compounds some, some folks actually use to transport food in some other parts of the world. I worked on a project uh, like that some few years ago, where it was a truck that actually allows the heat generation to cool the inside. So there's a lot of opportunities in this area. Okay. We just have to sit in the room and... Okay. And, 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 uh, Dr. Nyeka, to uh, um, uh, end with you, how I wish we had more time on such an interesting conversation. Um, this whole matter about energy, uh, it's going to be a key part of it, isn't it? Uh, Electricity you spoke about earlier, uh, where we, 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 the grid is the grid. But apparently now, you know, there are alternative sources, there are wind farms, uh, there are solar farms. Even in the U.S., we understand that the government is giving out these uh, uh, solar panels free. Uh, well, we're, maybe we should walk before we, we crawl before we walk. But um, all of these are exciting uh, options and possibilities for rural areas where we might need the boost of electricity, uh, but you know the grid doesn't get there yet. Would you not say, Doctor? Yes, definitely. You know, my line of um, my thought about electricity—it's not, you know, it's different. You know, it's not really. It's 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 kind of um, impacted. But when I talked about electricity, is in how we can reduce um, big bread, you know, and using electricity and reducing the energy requirement. Okay. But then in my field, what we do, we can also convert the food waste into energy. All right. Producing biofuel, biodiesel. So this is my research area also within uh, chemical engineering and something we can look into. How can we, you know, use the food waste that is generated to produce energy. I hear you. I hear you. Um, well, I, I, I'm afraid that's where we're going to have to leave it, uh, Dr. Helen Onyaka and um, uh, Engineer Modupe Ajibola, the US-based technology expert. And um, Dr. Helen Onyeka is in the UK University of Birmingham. Um, you know, being an Egba man, I was initially excited when I saw Egbastin in the UK. But uh, <laughs> thank you very much, both, both of you. Thank you very much, Dr. Onyeka. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. You, Ajibola, uh, for making time for us this morning. Hope we can do it again soon. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Enjoyed it. So that's our program. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>